Welcome to the last show of the week. I hope everybody is having a great Thursday. And on today's show, a Hemi Jeep hits the road, a Ferrari violently smashes one, and someone paid $250,000 for an old M3. Plus, we get a special visit from the Concours of America. I'm Tiffany Stone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. As a Jeep fan and the owner of a modified Wrangler, this first story really hits home for me. A spy photographer spotted a Hemi-powered Jeep Wrangler in the wild, looking very close to the concept we saw just two weeks ago. Power comes from Chrysler's tried and true 6.4 liter V8 Hemi, which should put out 450 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. Now that's a big deal because Jeep hasn't done anything like this since the early 80s when they put a 5 liter V8 in the Wrangler. Now you're going to laugh, but that engine only produced 125 horsepower. You heard me right, 125 horsepower. With this engine in this Jeep, it's kind of like Jordan and Kobe playing on the same team and Phil Jackson is the coach. So the big question remains for me, how much is this going to cost? And do I really need all of this horsepower? The answer is yes. And if this is Jeep's attempt at distracting enthusiasts from Bronco, it could work. For various reasons, it's unlikely Ford would put a V8 in the Bronco. So, if big tires and a mean exhaust are what you're after, the solid choice is the Jeep. Although, I might be a little biased, Team Jeep all the way. Let us know in the comments which one you'd like to have. Now, this next car also has a V8, but slightly more power and technology, and did I mention power? 968 horsepower to be exact. Our own Andrew Frankel got to shake down the new Ferrari SF90 Stradale, and it sounds like he had quite the experience. The supercar's three electric motors and mid-engine V8 helped to get the Ferrari to 60 miles per hour from a dead stop in a mere 2.5 seconds. One, two, done. As Andrew puts it, acceleration like that is a pretty bewildering, slightly violent, and a substantially unsettling experience. Now, the last time I was substantially unsettled, it was when Lucifer went three wheels up in Sand Hollow at last year's Trail to SEMA. Hey, stop, 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 stop. Put the car in a more civil mode and it becomes a continent crusher, so long as you don't have any luggage. One weird but cool fact about the Ferrari, it doesn't have a traditional reverse gear. Instead, it uses the electric motors at the front wheels to simply move in reverse. Now I'm surprised it isn't called something cool in Italian, kind of like Fronto Veloce a Retro Marcia or, or, or something like that, right? I know you guys are laughing at me. But speaking of Ferraris, $250,000 will get you a brand new GTC4 Lusso or a BMW from the 80s. Now we're all familiar with the original BMW M3. It's a small coupe based on the E30 chassis with a four cylinder making no power. But supposedly it was kind of, sort of slightly more fun to drive than the regular E30. The Zinnabrut, or as some may call it, red, over natural tan leather example, has only 8,000 miles, very little wear and tear, and it's okay, right? I think it looks like somebody really loved this car, maybe it was their first car. But does anyone out there think that it was worth $250,000? Seriously, think about that. $250,000. It's now the most expensive used M3 sold on Bring a Trailer by $150,000. And I don't know what to say, like I'm just throwing my hands up in the air. I just, no, 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 no. This is kind of like that Rick Astley song, you know from the 80s, I'm, you know which one I'm talking about. Never gonna give you up. It was like okay back in the time, but who knew that it would make such a comeback? There are so many other fun cars to buy. Personally, I would take something a little bit older with a lot more muscle. I would take a 1970 Challenger RT with a shaker hood. That makes me smile. So I guess all those E30 M3 owners out there will think twice about driving their cars now, which is a shame. Let us know what you would do with $250,000. Coming up. The Concours of America brings together some of the most impressive automobiles you'll ever find. After the break, 
Our own Larry Webster gets an up-close look at two of these special cars. But first... The legendary Jeep vehicles. They've been transporting troops, delivering mail, weathering storms, and winning races longer than a lot of vehicles have even existed. Today's Jeep CJ is taking more kids to school, more couples out on the town, and more families to paradise lost than ever, and getting more miles per gallon than any four-wheeler built in America. 1981 Jeep CJ. The legend lives on. Hi, I'm Larry Webster from Haggerty. We're here outside of Haggerty's Ann Arbor office. Now, usually this time of year, we're getting ready to go to the Conquers of America outside of Detroit. Now, it's one of my favorite concours because they have 300 cars usually that you're never going to see anywhere else. Now, since it's not happening this year, the organizers were kind enough to bring a little bit of the concourse to us. And standing beside me is really the evolution of the supercar. On my right is the 2020 Ferrari Pista, and on my left is what many consider the first supercar, a 1923 Duesenberg. The owner is Peter Hayden. He's had the car for over three decades. Peter, why don't you come on over? Now this is an extraordinary automobile. Thank you so much for bringing it. Now, if I, if I remember what you told me, the Duesenberg brothers were incredible engineers and they were racers. They won Indy four times, correct? They won the Indianapolis 500 uh, uh, 17, 18, 19, and then 21. Amazing. And they started, basically, they didn't have much of an education. They were homegrown tinkerers, correct? Yeah, they were originally, uh, the, the family originally came from Germany and the kids were 12 and 13 years old and uh, they started putting motors on bicycles, uh, risking their lives. Both of them were injured uh, for the rest of their lives. They walked with a like, funny gait because they had injured themselves. But then they started putting motors into uh, automobile chassis. Mm. And the first one I think they did was for Mercer, and then they started producing their own race cars. Now this was essentially the race car, but with a different body, so you could drive it on the street, correct? Yeah, the the engine was slightly different, but it was a straight eight motor, just the same. Straight, meaning straight eight cylinders lined up. Uh, uh, in a line. In the line. Yep. Uh, and that's why it says, I think and most of the signs say Duesenberg straight, straight eight. eight. Yeah, there, there it is, it is. right there. That's their famous logo. Now, some of the innovations that they brought to the car industry was aluminum pistons, overhead cams, and yes. this was... Uh, during the, in 1923, was this the fastest car you could buy? How fast was it? Well, I'm not sure it was the fastest, but I think pretty close to it. Yeah. I mean, don't forget, this car weighs a lot. Oh. And this weighs, um, what is it, two tons, I think. So, I mean, it's, it's got considerable uh, heft in it. And so it takes a lot to power it to, to get it down the road. Now, what have you loved about owning it? What's your favorite part about it? About well, the, uh, the restoration was a lot of fun going back and finding uh, all sorts of uh, literature about it, finding engineering materials that we needed in order to redo the engine, uh, finding uh, uh, information about how the, ch you know, how the chassis and where the clips go on the chassis. It's s silly stuff, but for a compulsive person like myself, it's s sort of my bread and butter. Now you have a long history of the Concourse, and I would imagine if this car was gonna be at the Concourse this year, and you would be there as well to answer questions and talk to folks about it. That's part of the fun, I would think, right? Oh, it's always the fun, yeah. yeah. The, I, I, very seldom get to see the whole field because I'm staying with the car and answering questions of the people that come around. Share it with everybody. Well, thank you so much for bringing it. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to share it with your audience. I hope they have fun uh, uh, trying to remember what the concourse looked like. Now here we have a 2020 Ferrari Pista Spider owned by Lauren Mendelson. Lauren, come on down. Hello. Thank you so much for bringing this gorgeous sports car. Uh, My pleasure. What is your favorite part about it? Uh, the experience, the ride, there's no question. Well, and my second favorite or our first favorite again is the appearance. So the design, we could certainly get behind the love of driving an automobile like this. Yes, absolutely. Because this is the most powerful V8 Ferrari ever made, That's right? correct, that's correct. The most powerful V8 so far that they've put into a body and it's street legal and uh, that's why they call it a supercar. So it's over 700 horsepower. It looks like that it's a beautiful car, but a lot of this bodywork looks very functional. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, you know, of course, the air intakes and the aerodynamics and the spoiler in the back, these are things to keep it on the road, and so you are always in control at those high speeds. To help the handling of things, right? Absolutely, and for safety as well. Ah, and this is a built from aluminum? Yes. Uh, most, no, this car is mostly carbon fiber. Bodywork, okay. Yeah. And including the engine is wrapped in carbon in the back. The lids are off carbon fiber. It's the end of the run racing version. And this pista meaning track. So this is a track car, but it is street legal. Spider meaning that the top goes down. Yeah. 
It's exceedingly fast for a convertible car. And the, the body is made out of carbon fiber for weight reasons. Obviously, it's very lightweight, which sure. means it's faster. Yep. I think the heaviest thing about this car beside the engine would be the fire extinguisher that's, <laughs> that's attached to the floor on the passenger side. How do you keep side. from getting tickets in a car like this? Uh, you just stay under the radar, that's yeah. all I can say. One of the most striking aspects of this one is the interior. It's, tell us about it. So the interior on this car is not just beautiful, it's also functional. Uh, it's made out of Alcantara, which is a suede-like fabric. And the seat has Gore-Tex inserts as well, and the idea is so you don't slide around when you are behind that wheel, going at high speeds, taking turns at 70, 80, 90, 100 sure. plus miles an hour. You want to stay in that seat right where you belong for control and, and everything else. Right. It's also very comfortable. Yeah. Now, when you, you've had cars at the Concourse of America before? I have. I'm, I'm proud to say that I think I've been exhibiting for at least 15 years, if not more. Wow. Back in the, in the day when they were at Meadowbrook, we were there for several years, and I have many fond memories. Uh, I look forward to, forward to it every year. I never want to be out of town. Do you have like a, like when you were specking it out, making it the way you wanted, like what was the hardest decision? Well, you want, you want to ask yourself, what do you want this car to say when it goes down the road? What do you want to say to other people? What kind of a look do you want to, to, to uh, project? Mm -hmm. Whether you want it to be menacing and aggressive and crazy looking, or if you want it to look very classic and gorgeous and Ferrari-esque and whatnot. And I think this color is called Tour de France Blue. It's a very unexpected shade. Out in the sunlight, as you can see, it's absolutely stunning. It's, it's like liquid emeralds to me. It's beautiful. All the scuderias, all the these end of the run cars have the racing stripe. I think it's brilliant to have this in black with the red stripes, where if you look on the inside, it's picked up right through here on the seats and it goes down the back the to through. the bottom of the car in the back. And I, and I uh, bet it sounds incredible. The sound is amazing on this car. But that might be your favorite part or not necessarily? That's certainly one of my favorite parts. It's just a beautiful sound. Just, yeah. and, and when the top is up, the rear window can go all the way down. It's just a tiny little window and you can put it down apart from any other window in the car and that way you can always hear the engine. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Well, it was a pleasure to meet and talk with you. Thanks so much for bringing this out and sharing it with everybody. My Appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Larry, for all that great information. I love that Duesenberg. I'll be here next week with some more automotive news, but until then, keep driving.